Hello everybody, welcome to the final video on the basics of HTML. In this video, we'll dive into one more crucial HTML element as we build the store page of the band website. By the end of this video, we'll have created all of the HTML that we need for the entire project. Before we get started coding, we need to cover one of the most important and most common HTML elements, the anchor tag. The anchor tag, also known as the A tag, is the HTML element that allows us to add links to our web pages. The structure of the anchor tag is very similar to that of an image tag, but instead of specifying a source attribute for an image, an anchor tag uses an href attribute, which stands for hypertext reference. The href attribute works exactly like the source attribute when trying to find the file you specified. This means that the href attribute value should be relative to the HTML file that the anchor tag is in. For example, if you had a file called page.html in the same folder as the HTML file with the anchor tag, then you would use page.html as the href of the anchor tag to link to page.html. Another use of the href tag is to link to other web pages by their URL. This also works exactly the same as the source attribute of the image tag. If you want to create a link to Google, then you would create an anchor tag and set the href to Google's URL. This URL must be the full URL of the website, which includes HTTP at the beginning. In order for an anchor tag to work, the href attribute must be defined. Another common attribute, the target attribute, on the other hand, is optional. The target attribute specifies where the link should open. By default, the value of the target attribute is self, which means the link should open in the current browser tab. The only other value for the target attribute is blank. That means that the link opens in a separate tab. Don't forget to make sure you include the underscore in the front of the self and blank target attribute values, or they will not work. We will cover both target types in the coding section of this video, so if this does not make sense yet, it will become obvious in a bit. Now that we got that out of the way, let's jump into the coding of the store page for the band website. Hello everybody, welcome to the coding section of this video. As you can see, on the left I have Visual Studio Code open with the project from the last video that we left off on. The only difference is that inside the images folder, I've added all the images that we're going to need to create the store page of the band website. On the right of my screen, I have a picture of the store web page pulled up so we can use this as a reference to create the HTML for the band page. Let's get started by copying the about.html page and renaming it to store.html. This is because our store page and our about page both share the same header and the same footer. Now let's delete the content in the center about the about page that we do not actually need in the store page. What we do need is we need to create a section for the music section for merch, and a section for cart. Let's do that. Inside of each of these sections, we're also going to have a header for the title of music, merch, and cart. Now let's take a look at the content inside of each of these sections. As you can see, the music and merch section both share the same template for its content, where it has an album or t-shirt or coffee cup, whatever is being sold, a picture of that, the price of it, and then a button to add it to the cart. So let's create these elements. What we're going to want to do, we're going to want to wrap this entire element inside of a div element, so that way we know it is one contained content. Inside of that div, we're going to want to have a div for the album name. This is because we want this to be on its own line, so we can't just use a span. And inside of that div, since this is bolded, we'll use a strong tag to put the title of album one. Next, we're gonna to wanna to add the image tag, and it's going to have a source attribute, which in our case is going to be images slash album one dot PNG. And lastly, we need to add a final div that's going to wrap both the price and button for adding to cart. We're going to put the price inside of a span, and then we're going to add the button for add to cart, and make sure to add the role of button since this is just a general generic button. Now let's open that up using Live Server to see what our changes look like. As you can see, we have the album name, picture of the album, and then the line containing the price and the button to add to cart. The only thing left to do now is to copy this and paste it down four times so that we have the section like this for all of the albums that we are selling in the music section of our store. I'm going to do that now. Now if we open that up, we can see that we have our four different albums being displayed with the title at the top, picture in the middle, 
and price button at the bottom. You may notice, however, though, that they are all on an individual line as opposed to being side by side as they are in this image. This is because we are wrapping all of them inside of a div, and divs break the line as we talked about earlier. Later we are going to fix this in the CSS portion of our course, but for now we will just keep it like this because, as you remember, HTML is only for content, and CSS is where we talk about layout and display. Now if we go back to the image of our store page, we can see that in the merch section we have almost the exact same layout that we do inside of the music section of our store. So I'm just going to copy one of the templates from the music section, paste it into the merch section, and change it accordingly. Now if we go view this, you'll see that these also show up at the bottom inside of the merch section. The last thing that we have to look at is the cart section of our store. This is slightly different than the rest of our sections and includes a few new elements that we haven't talked about yet. Let's first get started by creating the header row of item, price, and quantity. To do this, we will wrap all three of these in a div so that they appear on the same line, and we will use strong tags to wrap all the content because it is bolded. Now if we go take a look at that, we will see that we have item, price, and quantity all displayed on the same line, but we will use the same spacing trick that we used in the last video in order to show the space between these because right now it is difficult to read. So in our code we are going to add a less than and a greater than sign. This will add a little bit of spacing between our elements. We will just copy this one more time so it is between price and quantity as well. Next, we are going to work on adding in each of the individual rows of this section. We'll do this by using another div tag to wrap the entire row, followed by an image tag to store the image for the first item. We'll use the source to be album1, as we talked about earlier, and close that, and we'll go look at it, and we'll see that this image is way too large. We want this image to be much smaller. In order to do that, we can set a width and height property on the actual image element itself. This attribute we're going to set to 100, which will stand for 100 pixels. If we leave off the height element, it will automatically adjust the height to be in aspect ratio with the width. So if we had an image that was 200 pixels by 400 pixels, so 200 pixels wide, 400 pixels tall, and we set the width to 100, the new height would be 200, which would automatically be set. If we, however, set both the height and the width, it will automatically set both those for us to be 100 and 100. Next, we are going to want to add the name of the actual item inside of a span. We will just call this t-shirt. And then we will want to add in the price inside of a span as well. And between those, we are going to want to use the less than and greater than signs that we talked about for our spacing. Now if we view that, we will see that we have the name of the item followed by the price of the item. Next, we need to add in this input that allows users to select the quantity of item that they want, where they can type in any number that they want in here. In order to do this, we are going to use an input element. An input element is an empty element that allows us to create an input of various different types. In this case, we are using a number input, so we will set the type equal to number. There are many different types of input that you can create, but the most common types are a number input and a text input. We will then close that off. And if we go back to our page, we'll see that we have an input in here that allows us to enter only numbers into it. We cannot enter anything that is not a number, just numbers. But in our example, you can see that we have this pre-populated with a 1. In order to do this, we'll set the value property. The value property corresponds to the value of the actual input element. And as we change it, as we type in different numbers into the input, this value will automatically adjust to be the same as whatever number we typed in here. So over here, let's just put the value of 1, because that is what is in our picture here. I'm also going to use the same spacing tricks that we talked about with the less than greater sign to add a space between this price and the input. And lastly, we need to add in a button. This button will have the role of button, because it is a generic button, and inside of it we will just put the text remove. Now if we go back to our page, we can see that we have all of the elements here that we have in our image over here. Now let's copy this div one time and fill it in with the information from the second row down here. Now if we go back, we can see that we have the correct information here. I also changed this first image to be the shirt image because I forgot to change that. 
And as we can see, we have the value of two in here, which corresponds to the value of the input element here. Lastly, let's add an HR after all of these in order to put that line at the bottom of the page that we have here before we get to total. The reason I'm not including an HR under these item, price, and quantity views is because we will add these later with CSS. This is because an HR takes up the entire space that is given, which in our case will be all the way from the far left of our page to the far right of our page with no breaks in between. Now let's add a final div, which is going to contain the information for the total and the price. As we can see, the total is emphasized with bold, so we'll use a strong tag and type in total. And then we will have the price inside of a span. Lastly, we want to add this purchase button at the very bottom underneath of everything else. So inside of a div of its own, so that it is on its own line, we'll add in a button with the role of button. And we will give it the text of purchase. And that's all there is to creating this HTML here. And as we can see, if we look over here, we have all the elements that we have on this page created in HTML here. The last thing we have left to do is add in links so that we can navigate with the home, store, and about buttons that we have up here. In order to do that, let's scroll up to the very top and wrap this text inside of an A tag as we talked about earlier so that now our text is a link. But in order for this link to work, we need the href that we talked about earlier. Since our store page is in the same page as our index page, which is our home page, all we need to type in is index.html. And now when we save this, we'll have a link here that when we click on it, will bring us to the index.html page. Now let's go back to the store page and do this for all of our different links. Now you can see that we have buttons for the home page, store page, and the about page. And when clicked on, they'll bring us to the different pages. At the very bottom, you'll notice that we also have buttons for YouTube, Spotify, and Facebook. So now we need to add anchor tags wrapped around this. But as you can see, there's no text for us to wrap around. All there is is this image tag. But that is okay. We can wrap this image tag inside of an anchor tag and it'll work as a button. In order to do this, create the anchor tag, give it a rich href, which in this case is going to be the URL of YouTube, which is https colon backslash backslash youtube.com. And then we will put the image tag inside of this A tag. Now when we save that, if we hover over YouTube, we can see that it is a button. And if we click it, it'll bring us to youtube.com. Let's do the same thing for Spotify and Facebook. Now if we save that, we can see that the YouTube link, Spotify link, and Facebook link are all working. As you can see, if we click here, we go to the Spotify website, and so on. But one problem is that when we click these links, it'll override the tab that we're in, and we don't want that for these bottom links. So we're going to use the target attribute on our href, and we're going to set it to underscore blank. I'm going to copy this over to all the rest of our links. And now when we click on a link for Spotify, for example, it'll open in a new tab, while keeping the tab for our original page. Now, all we need to do is copy these new links that we created over to our home and our about page, and our HTML will be completely finished for the entire website. And there we go. Now, if we go to any of these pages, you'll see that we have links that work on all of our pages. One last thing that I forgot to mention is that in our store page, we want to change the title of our page from the generics about to the generics store. And there we go. That is all the HTML that we need for this entire project. In our next set of videos, we'll be covering CSS. CSS is what is going to allow us to take this boring, bland looking HTML and converting it over to this beautiful looking mockup that we have over here. After we're done with the CSS for all of our pages, we're then going to jump into JavaScript, which will allow us to make our store page interactive. This will make it so that the add cart button actually adds elements to the cart down here, the remove element actually removes them, 
and changing the numbers inside of the quantity will actually update the total. And that is all there is to HTML. While we have covered many HTML elements, there are still many more HTML elements that we have not covered. I have only selected the most important and useful HTML elements to cover in this introductory course because many of the HTML elements are either obsolete or only useful in very specific scenarios. Even I do not know all the HTML elements, and you should not know them all either. If there is, however, any HTML elements or concepts that you feel I have missed, please let me know down in the comments below, and I'll be sure to cover them in future videos. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. Thanks for watching.